In this video, we will cover how to graph polynomial functions. Before we get into the actual process of doing so, let's define what a polynomial is. Polynomials are sums of terms in the form k times x to the n, where k is any number and n is a positive integer. By this definition, here are three examples of polynomials x squared plus 3x plus 2, negative x cubed plus x squared plus 2x, and 2x to the fourth plus 1. Let's also define what the degree of a polynomial is. The degree of a polynomial is simply the value of the largest exponent in the polynomial. Thus, our first polynomial would be a second degree polynomial. The second one would be a third degree polynomial. And the third one would be a fourth degree polynomial. Now that we know what a polynomial is, let's dive into the actual process of graphing one. I've broken this process up into two different parts. The first step in this process is to identify the n behavior of the polynomial. And all n behavior really is, is how the polynomial behaves at extremely large and extremely small values of x. The second step involves finding the zeros of the polynomial, that is the x values where the function is equal to zero. And determining the multiplicity of each zero, which I'll get into a little bit later on. Now there's two factors that affect the end behavior of a polynomial. The first is the degree of the polynomial, and I explained what this was a little bit earlier on. And the second is the sign of the leading coefficient. And the leading coefficient is the coefficient of the term with the largest exponent. Let's say with the polynomial minus 3x cubed plus 4x squared minus 6x to the fifth. If we wanted to find the leading coefficient of this polynomial, we would look for the term with the largest exponent, which is minus 6x to the fifth in this case, and the coefficient of this term. Now that we have defined both factors that affect n behavior, let's create a table to illustrate the four possible n behaviors polynomials can have. The first scenario is if you have a polynomial with an even degree and a leading coefficient that is positive, I've abbreviated leading coefficient as LC, then as x approaches positive or negative infinity, f of x will approach infinity. An example of a polynomial with an even degree and a positive leading coefficient is x squared. Now the graph of x squared looks something like this. You'll notice that for the function x squared, as x approaches positive infinity, the function f of x grows towards infinity, and the same thing is true as x approaches negative infinity. Now let's consider the second case. Let's say the degree of the polynomial is still even, but now the sign of the leading coefficient is negative. For this type of polynomial, as x approaches plus or minus infinity, f of x will approach negative infinity. An example of a polynomial that illustrates this behavior is negative x squared. The degree is two and it's even, the leading coefficient is minus one, so it's negative. We can see this behavior illustrated more clearly if we graph negative x squared, which looks like this. And you'll notice that as x approaches positive infinity and x approaches negative infinity, f of x approaches negative infinity as well. Now let's consider our third scenario where the degree of the polynomial is odd. The sign of the leading coefficient is positive. For this type of polynomial, as x approaches infinity, f of x will approach infinity and as x approaches negative infinity, f of x will also approach negative infinity. An example of a polynomial that illustrates this behavior is x cubed. The degree is odd and the leading coefficient is positive one. And if we graph x cubed, and if we graph x cubed, which looks something like this, you'll notice, you'll notice that as x approaches infinity, f of x does the same, and as x approaches negative infinity, f of x approaches negative infinity as well. 
Now for the fourth and final scenario, let's consider a polynomial that has an odd degree and a leading coefficient that is negative. For this type of polynomial, as x approaches infinity, f of x will approach minus infinity. And as x approaches negative infinity, f of x will approach positive infinity. And you should be noticing a pattern here. These two scenarios have opposite end behaviors, and these two have opposite end behaviors. And sort of a big takeaway from this, if two polynomials have either both even degrees or both odd degrees, and leading coefficients of opposite signs, their end behavior will be opposite. Now to complete the table, you guys are probably guessing that the function that we're going to use as an example is negative x cubed, because it has an odd degree and a negative leading coefficient. And if you graph this function, and I'm running out of space here, it looks something like this. As x approaches positive infinity and becomes really, really big, f of x approaches negative infinity. And as x approaches negative infinity, f of x will approach positive infinity. Now let's talk about zeros. Zeros are the x values where the function is equal to zero. Let's say we had the function f of x is equal to x squared plus 3x plus 2 and we wanted to find its zeros. We would equate the function to zero, so zero equals x squared plus three x plus two. And from this point on, it's easiest to solve if you factor the right side. So we'll make the zero equals x plus two times x plus one. Now this should be easy enough to solve. The right side is equal to zero when x plus two is equal to zero, or when x plus one equals zero. If we subtract two from both sides, we get x equals minus two and x equals minus one as our two zeros. And thus the zeros for this function are x equals minus two and x equals minus one. Now let's add another component to this problem. Let's find out what the multiplicity of each zero is. In order to find the multiplicity of a certain zero, look at the factored form of the polynomial and find out what power the factor that gives rise to the zero is raised to. Now let's say we wanted to find the multiplicity of the zero x equals minus two in this function. We would look at the factored form of the polynomial, which is over here, identify the factor which gives rise to the zero, which in this case is this x plus two, and find out what power this factor is raised to. Although it is not written, there is an implied one here, just as there is here, and the power that the factor is raised to is the multiplicity of that zero. Now we can apply the same process to find out the multiplicity of the zero x equals minus one. We look at the factored form of the equation. This is the factor that gives rise to the zero at x equals minus one, and this factor is raised to the power one, which means the multiplicity of this zero would be one as well. Now let's say we have the function f of x is equal to x cubed plus four x squared plus four x, if we want to find the zeros, we'll equate the function to zero like last time. And now if we factor the right side, we'll notice that all three terms in this polynomial have x in them. So we can take out the x and make this x times x squared plus 4x plus 4, which becomes x times x plus 2 times x plus 2. And if we simplify this further, we get x times x plus two whole square. Now I'm gonna bring this to the top. We know that the terms on the right can only be equal to zero if either x is equal to zero or if x plus two whole squared is equal to zero. This equation on our left needs no simplification and for the one on the right, if we take the square root of both sides, we get x plus two equals zero and subtracting two from both sides, we get x equals minus two. Now let's find out what the multiplicities of each of these zeros are. The factor that gives rise to the zero x equals zero is just x, and the power of this x is raised to is an implied one, and so the multiplicity of this zero is one. Now the factor that gives rise to the zero x equals minus two is x plus two, and the power of this factor is raised to is two, which means the zero x equals minus two would have a multiplicity of two. Now that we know how to find zeros and their multiplicities, let's talk about how the multiplicity of a zero affects the behavior of a graph at that zero. It turns out that when a zero has an odd multiplicity, the function crosses through 
the x-axis at that zero. At zeros of an even multiplicity, the function behaves a little bit differently. Rather than crossing through the x-axis, the function simply touches the x-axis and bounces off. In order to see this more visually, let's switch over to the graphing software Desmos. Let's say we have three functions, x minus one, which is in green, x minus one cubed, which is in purple, and x minus one to the fifth, which is in black. All of these functions have a zero at x equals one, because in all of these functions, the zero at x equals one is of an odd multiplicity, in the green one the multiplicity is one, in the purple it's three, and in the black it's five, the function crosses through the x-axis at this point. You'll notice that as the odd multiplicity becomes greater and greater as it goes from one to three to five, the function flattens out more and more at the zero. Now let's consider three different functions. x minus one squared, which is in red, x minus one to the fourth, which is in blue, and x minus one to the sixth, which is in green. Like the last three functions, these three functions have a zero at x equals one, but now the zeros are of an even multiplicity, two, four, and six. And so the graph touches the x-axis and bounces off at these points rather than crossing through as it did when the zeros were of an odd multiplicity. You'll notice a similar pattern as we did at the last set of three. As the even multiplicity becomes bigger and bigger as it progresses from two to four to six, the function flattens out more and more near the zero. Now let's put all that we've learned about the process of graphing a polynomial to use and graph the function f of x is equal to x cubed plus x squared. Let's start by identifying the end behavior of this polynomial. Now the end behavior of a polynomial is dependent on two things, the first of which is the degree of the polynomial, and the second of which is the sign of the leading coefficient. The degree of the polynomial is 3, which is odd, and the sign of the leading coefficient is positive. As x approaches infinity, f of x will approach infinity, and as x approaches negative infinity, f of x will approach negative infinity as well. And so this statement is our polynomial's end behavior. Now let's try to find out the zeros of this polynomial. In order to find out the zeros, let's factor the polynomial. So this will become f of x is equal to x squared times 1 plus x. And all I've done here is bring out the x squared in both of these terms. And now we equate this to 0. 0 equals x squared times 1 plus x. I'm not going to bother writing the additional steps here. But we know the right side of this equation can only be equal to zero if x squared is equal to zero, which is when x is zero, or if one plus x is equal to zero, which is where x is equal to minus one. So now we know our two zeros. The first one is x is equal to zero, and the second one is x is equal to minus one. Now let's determine the multiplicity of each of these zeros. The factor that gives rise to the zero x is equal to zero is x. And because this factor is raised to the power two, this zero has a multiplicity of two. And the factor that gives rise to the zero x is equal to minus one is one plus x. This one plus x term is raised to an applied power of one, which makes the multiplicity of this zero one. Now all the information we need to graph the polynomial is in these two boxes. We know that as x approaches infinity, f of x will approach infinity. And as x approaches negative infinity, f of x will approach negative infinity as well. Now we know how the function behaves at extreme values of x but we need to figure out what's going on in the middle. And we can do this by referring to the table with the zeros of the function and their multiplicities. We know this function will be equal to zero at x is equal to zero, and x is equal to minus one. The zero at x is equal to minus one has an odd multiplicity of one, which means the graph will pass through the x-axis at this point. The next zero, which is at x is equal to zero, has an even multiplicity of two, which means that x is equal to zero, the graph will touch the x-axis and bounce off and then grow towards infinity as x approaches infinity, as our end behavior says. And so the polynomial x cubed plus x squared will roughly look something like this. Now let's say we have the polynomial f of x is equal to minus x times x plus 1 cubed. Let's start by determining the end behavior of this polynomial. We know end behavior is dependent on two things, the degree of the polynomial, as well as the sign of the leading coefficient. Now while it's easier to find the degree and the sign of the leading coefficient of a polynomial 
from the polynomials in its expanded form. Expanding polynomials like these can be tedious. So here's a nifty little trick to help you guys find out these two things for a polynomial in its factored form. Notice that when you expand this x plus 1 cubed term, you'll get x cubed plus something plus something plus something and so on and so on, where all the terms that follow the x cubed are of a lesser degree. And when you multiply these two things together, the term with the greatest exponent of the whole polynomial will be this minus x to the fourth, and all the terms that follow will be of a lesser degree. And so the degree of this polynomial is 4, and it's even, and the sign of the leading coefficient is negative. And we know that when polynomials have an even degree and a negative leading coefficient, their end behavior is as follows. As x approaches positive or negative infinity, f of x will approach negative infinity. And so this is the end behavior of this polynomial. Now let's move on to finding the zeros. And because the polynomial is alternating in its factored form, this step should be easy. f of x will be equal to 0 when x is equal to 0 and when x is equal to minus 1. The multiplicity of the 0 at x is equal to 0 is 1 because of the implied 1 here. And the multiplicity of the 0 at x is equal to minus 1 is 3 because the factor that gives rise to this 0 is raised to the third power. Now that we've got all the information we need, the only step left is to actually graph. Based on the end behavior, we know that when x becomes really, really big or really, really small, f of x will approach negative infinity. So on the graph, that'll look something like this. We know our function will be equal to 0 at x is equal to 0 and x is equal to minus 1. Both of these zeros are of an odd multiplicity, so we know the function will pass through the x-axis at these points. The 0 at x is equal to minus 1 has a multiplicity of 3, so the graph will flatten out a little bit as it passes through. And the 0 at x is equal to 0 has a multiplicity of 1, so the graph will pass right through the x-axis at this point rather than flattening out. And by our end behavior, as x approaches infinity, f of x approaches negative infinity. So the function will continue to grow in this direction as x becomes bigger and bigger. And so there you have the polynomial minus x times x plus 1 cubed graphed.